Hey everyone, Kevin here with visualproductivity.net. We're going to go over Xmind 7.5. Now I know this has been out for about half a year, but I'm liking this one. This the 0.5 version has actually made things pretty cool with Xmind. Let's talk about my overall thoughts. Well, then we'll get into some things I think are really awesome and maybe a couple things that were changed that I almost wish they were rolled back. If this is the first video of mine that you're watching, hey, I appreciate that. And if you've watched uh, dozens or hundreds other of other videos, hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about my first initial thoughts, my first initial thoughts on Xmind 7.5. I've been using Xmind since about 2007 and on and off with other programs, but I've pretty much consistent. I've always had Xmind on my computer since that time. I highly recommend it, obviously, because I do the whole Xmind uh, cheat sheet and all those good things as well. I really like it. And this is the program that I use more than any other. It's my daily use program. So, so yes, I'm a bit of a fanboy, but hey, that's fine. I, li I like the stuff. They, do, they make good stuff. Okay, so we'll go over some of the things in the what I like section, but pretty much I really enjoy the program. It's solid. It works. It does everything I need. And I did put down here, you can see consistent development. That's huge. They have updates coming out every couple of months. They have a major update generally every year, usually in the fall around this time. And this one, the 7.5 actually came out of nowhere in June. It was kind of cool to see that, but it was a huge upgrade. And we'll talk about some of the neat things that they added in a couple seconds here. I also like the fact that they do listen to consumers. I know some people have said, well, they don't do this, and they don't do that, but some things are actually bigger jobs than what they first appear. Uh, an example of that was just having to, people want to be able to print the Gantt charts. And everyone's like, it should be easy, just flip a switch. And it actually, I talked to the guys at Xmind and it, it was actually pretty involved in getting that, that fix done. And they got it done and now that's obviously huge. It's, it's in Xmind 7, it's all baked into this version and it, it's really, really cool. Uh, some areas to improve, you know what? Not much. I think they, they're doing a pretty good job overall. There's a couple things. Obviously, the big thing that still, we're still waiting for is just the ability to have an app, a native app for this. There's some workarounds, but that's been, I think, a, a big thing that we're still all waiting for out of Xmind. A huge thing, though, they did add, and we'll again, again talk this about this in about two more seconds, is they did add an online editing component, and that's made things a lot easier. A tremendous improvement in the overall usability of the program. All right, guys, let me just close these off a little bit here. We're gonna come over, let's hit the changes. Let's talk about a couple things. And these are just things in 7.5, not really in seven anymore. So this is all just that happened over the past couple of months. One thing is the cloud. This is really the reason why they released 7.5 in my opinion, because it was such a significant enhancement that they wanted to name it something different. So you can sync files now, you can upload something at work or at home, and because it goes through the cloud, hey, presto, it all works. There were always ways you could work around things in the past, but now it just, it all happens inside Xmind. So that's really cool. The one gig of storage is only for pro users. So you have to actually have a paid version of Xmind to have that ability. But guys, this is, it's really been cool. I've been using it and I'm, it's, it's great. You can use several computers. You can connect and collaborate much better than you could in the past. So this is a huge, huge step up. And obviously the online viewing and editing is really cool as well. Uh, the new share dialogue, yeah, it's, it's actually kind of cool, the share dialogue. Let's go in here, I'll open it up under File, Share, and what they've done is they've given us tons of options now. In the past, we had to go in, we had to upload this, and then we had to connect something, we had to get the link, and then insert the link. This thing, is just makes things simpler. It's, it takes a few steps out of the whole process. So let's say, for instance, let's say, for instance, we want to either put this in our blog, we can embed it in the blog, or we can... Uh, we can just have a link that people can go to to click on it. So why don't I say this? If you want a copy of this Xmind 7.5 review, let's go ahead and let's make a link for it so everyone can get one. We'll call it X.7.5. This is, I'll, I'll put uh, Kevin's review. Um, what do you want to call it? Kevin's review map. Let's leave it at that. And we'll upload this to Xmind. And after a second two, we get this. So we've got a link. I'm gonna take that link. It's already highlighted for me, so I can just hit copy and we'll close that out. And now I can go ahead and look it up. So let's go back. Let's open a new window. We'll plug this in. There we go. And there is the map. Look at that. Nice and cool. And you should be able to download it right there. Perfect. The next thing that's a, kind of a neat change in Xmind 7.5 
is this whole iconfinder.com search bar. And I think this is a pro feature, if I remember correctly. And we'll go back. Yep, let's go back to this one here. We'll go to Windows, Icon Finder. Yeah, it's a pro too. Okay. And I can pick whatever I want. I'll put Apple in because I know there's tons on Apple. Hit enter. And it gives me a suggestion of certain ones. There's a way more than this, but these are the ones they're going to show me. Next. So let's talk about... Let's get into what I like. I don't want this being too long, but I'm already starting to uh, talk too much about this. Okay, uh, definitely a cleaner look. They were going for that when they went to X-7. And this is a, it looks more modern than X-6 did. So I, I like that. One thing I do like is the little red indicator. I don't know the technical term for it. The little red indicator when I'm moving a topic around. So I can grab this topic. I'll cl left click and hold it down. And boom, 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 we can see that it's moving. There's a little red oval thing, oval-ish thing, where, wherever I'm moving it, when I release, that's exactly where it pops up. So that's a neat thing. And it's, I find it a little tweaky. I'm calling it tweaky, just that sometimes I can't quite exactly, especially when I'm going to the top of the menu, it doesn't, I can't always just make it fit right before it goes somewhere else weird. Attachments are now free. I actually don't remember what I, why I wrote that. I wrote that back in June. Um, so apparently attachments are now free. Hey, um, right click to move map. This is big for me for, because for a while you had to, you had to use the, the scroll mouse, but when I'm using my laptop, then I don't always use a mouse. And then I it was just, it was harder to move things. So this way I can just, I'll right click on this and I can just drag the whole map around. I love that. Pretty much these features are all back to X mine seven, but because it didn't do an X mine seven review, I'm talking about them in 7.5 and the resources bundle. The resources bundles are, are actually really cool. They're a plus feature. What they allow you to do is take certain resources. So this would be themes and markers and different things. And then you can bundle those and you can export them and you can import them. So it's going to be a way of sharing uh, different resources that you can have. So it's a new way of making sure things are easier to use. Another thing that has been huge for, I know a lot of you because I've fielded several emails and had different conversations with a lot of you guys about this is when you go into print, you don't always want these pluses or the minus signs showing. So now we're able to just deselect those and they won't show when you go ahead and print the map. And I know this was, was an actually a buying decision for a lot of people saying, well, if I can't do that and I want to print these, then I'm just not going to buy X mind. Boom. They're, <laughs> they're there now. Uh, I don't really print anything in X mind, but if you do, that's actually, I know it's a huge issue for a lot of you, so it's there. Nice. And now to the doom and gloom, the areas to improve. And really, that is, there's not a whole lot that I'm going to say that's really negative. I've got a lot of things here, but overall, I'm pretty happy, like, like I said, with the program. Um, one thing, yeah, this is kind of different, is that they made things, there's a little, this bar, it seems like it's kind of thick. And I feel, I feel like I'm losing a bit of height. I've already lost, you know, now that we've all gone to 16 by nine screens, you kind of lose a bit of height. And now this bar just seems like it's a little too thick for me. The tabs are a little too big, bigger than what I need. And this was part of the x 7 redesign. So I think I would love to get a little more, maximize my real estate. And there's no way that I that I found to really be able to, to get rid of all these things up here. To, I can either make them completely disappear, but I can't really shrink that that space in there. Uh, the pop-up menus, this is different too. The pop-up menus now don't have close buttons. They used to have a, a minimize and a close. Let's go ahead. I'll just... Actually, that's a bad example because it doesn't give me one. All right. Uh, actually, that still will. Well, F4, F4. There we go. Okay. So now if I open a window, I just got a, a notes window open. You can see if I go to the right-hand side, there's, oh, there's a minimize uh, button, but there's no close button. I understand. I, yes, I can right-click if I got Windows and Command-click if I've got a Mac and hit close, that's fine. But to me that I was, I'm not sure. I, I liked having that close button in front of me just so that it was whatever, a split second faster and saves me an extra click kind of thing. Um, so that's maybe something I would love to see come back. I remove the save as new workbook. Yeah, this is kind of different. Now what you can do, I can go in and I can choose a topic. I'll actually just choose this one. In order to get this map open like I did, I actually did that. I saved as a new sheet in my, my main tab. And then I went through and I had to go through and hit file, save as, and that saved it as a its own sheet. So it it's still doable. Again, little nitpicky things, but it just took me two steps now instead of having to just click on it one time and save as a new workbook, which 
I really didn't use that often, but sometimes when I just have a big project that starts getting bigger and bigger, I know it's going to have to go into its own workbook. And that was just a neat feature that I thought. So really this is just me nitpicking about all the features that they removed. Um, I need to right click to delete comments. Again, same sort of thing where I would have just liked to be able to hit a comment and just hit the delete key. Whereas I've got to go onto each comment and, and actually delete it with a right click. Uh, open open maps. Yeah, this is kind of different. Is I don't I haven't found at least um, anything I can, I can click on to open a new map. So I've got a home button and all these other buttons, but I, I actually have to hit file and then new or open rather to to create uh, to rather to open one of my other maps. To me, it just seems like one extra step. And yes, I can do control O and whatever else, that's fine. I just thought if they're gonna have tabs up there, which I don't really use that often, it'd be kind of good to have uh, an open one as well. The whole map, oh my goodness, I cried for days about the whole map. Uh, what, it used to, what it used to be allowed was you had one map you would specify so that every time Xmine opened, that map always opened. Now that's gone. What happens now is you can set it, you can choose to either open a blank, X mine window or have whatever you've opened all the all the workbooks you've had open in the past open every single time. So in this case, if I closed X mine right now, I'd have my main map open and this X mine 7.5 tutorial would also open. So it just remembers the last state that X mine was in when you closed it. I wasn't overly happy with this when it first happened, but you know what? Life goes on. I'm getting used to it. And if you've never had to if you've never had your home map, if you've never fallen in love with your home map, hey, it's no big deal. I just leave the home map open all the time, my main map. And just if I want to, I can have two or three open now instead of one. So, hey, you know what? It actually wasn't as bad as what I thought it was going to be. The index view, you know what, guys? When it first released, I was still using uh, actually the, the beta version of XMind. I wrote that and I actually haven't gone back and tested the index view since. So I'm just, just going to close that for now. I mean, not, it's probably been addressed. There's been a couple of updates since then. So... I'm not going to say anything's going on if nothing's going on. Um, one thing that I did find that I would like to see improved is that it does take longer. When you have a map that's linked to the cloud or when you've got two or three maps that you've got chained up that are big, because I, I use, you know, my, map, my maps get pretty big. It does take quite a bit longer. I'm talking, I don't know, it feels like a minute or two. I'm sure it's maybe less than that, but I get ants even. I'm like, oh, come on, I want to start entering stuff. So I would like to see that maybe quickened a little bit. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, but that's pretty much it guys. Overall though, I'm obviously really happy with the Xmind software. I make a ton of videos on these guys and I, uh, I've got a pretty good relationship with them. I email them all the time. Um, overall though, guys, I do enjoy this a lot. I highly recommend Xmind 7.5 and I would recommend that if you're considering it, their free version is amazing. Go ahead, download the free version, play with it to your heart's content. And when you're ready to upgrade to the pro version, come on back and you can get some uh, some of my free bonuses when uh, if you choose to go through me. Hey guys, that's it for now. I appreciate you watching. If this video helped you out a little bit, hey, I appreciate uh, you hitting the like button, leaving a comment, saying hi. Let me know what your thoughts are on XMind 7.5. Until next time, I am Kevin Oxner with visualproductivity.net and we will talk soon. See ya.